How's it going everybody? My name is Ben and today we're going to be talking about The Falcon and the Winter Soldier Episode 4, The World is Watching. So this week's episode starts out giving us a flashback to about six years ago to Bucky in Wakanda, kind of showing his first moment where he's kind of breaking through and becoming Bucky yeah. again and not so much the Winter Soldier. We kind of see how his turmoil and memories of all these horrible things he did or what actually connect him together and make him a person. And from this point on we are shown a moment with Zemo and the guys in what appears to be like his apartment or his penthouse, I don't know, it's a super big intricate looking building in Latvia and they're discussing whether or not super soldiers need to be eliminated or not and naturally Zemo thinks that all super soldiers are supremacists and they use Steve as an example and he even says that there is no one like Steve Rogers and no one can even replace him which I thought was pretty cool to hear a line of respect from Zemo for Steve Rogers even though he hates super soldiers so much he still understood that Steve was a person who was worthy of having that power and was probably the only living example of that. So from here all three of the guys head down to the encampment that the Flag Smashers have kind of occupied or gained the most support from and each try and use a different method of interrogation to try and gain some information to the different people that live there. None of them go very well except for Zima, which is a little weird. He brings out Turkish Delight, which they he made a weird Turkish Delight joke earlier that made no sense and it it was weird to see it pay off with basically Zemo giving candy to children, which <laughs> both Bucky and Falcon were like, we did not sign up for this weirdo. But it was a really cool scene to just see Zemo kind of interact with people and gain their support quicker than the Avengers can in an area like this where people kind of treat the Avengers with a little bit of hostility. At this point, John Walker and his buddies show up and, uh, I start to notice that his character, as of last episode, and definitely this episode, he's just beginning to be more agitated and frustrated at the fact that he's not a super soldier. There's a couple of moments in this episode where he gets either his ass kicked or something happens that he couldn't stop it from happening without the serum, and it just drives him to these horrible decisions, which are paid off definitely in the second half, and you're just amazed at the lengths that John Walker's willing to go and just how driven he seems to the point that it almost is driving him mad. And now that everyone's all together, Falcon brings up his plan of going to meet Morgan and talk to her person on person and just try and get a better understanding of her because he doesn't feel like she truly is as evil as she comes across to the outside world. And of course, everyone tags along for the plan which involves John Walker being extremely agitated, handcuffing Zemo and everything going a little haywire at a point, but it is within this scene that we get to see uh, a conversation which they've been setting up for a moment that makes the Flag Smashers more connected to society, or more connected to us at least, and we feel a little more sympathetic for them, and it's been difficult, because they've, they've had the scenes interlaced a little bit throughout, in this episode there's a lot of them at the beginning with various members discussing whether or not what they're doing is right, and they just, they don't, I don't get the connection. That is until we get to this scene with Falcon, and that's a really good scene of him and her talking to each other and having a really good convo about how she feels and why she's driven to feel that way, and he's definitely pulling a little bit of the psychiatrist treatment on her. But right there in that conversation, you can kind of see her as more of a human character and not just this overly angry teenager who has superpowers. She begins to shed her shell a little bit and Falcon's able to talk to her kind of in the way as I mean they directly say it which is unnecessary we can see the connection to the way Falcon would interact with people when he's working at the veterans hall and interacting with Morgan we didn't really need them to directly explain it to us like they did but it was a really good scene and I think it did a great job of developing her character more so than any of the other scenes with her in the show have and it already seems like this episode has so much going on when you realize that we're not even halfway through it yet when all of this has happened and the rest of the episode is just crazy obstacles, plot twists, and, well, a really dark and brutal ending. So yeah, we get an appearance from the Dora Milaje later in the episode, which makes John Walker feel really insignificant, we find out later. Him and Hoskins have a good convo. I was actually a really well done scene, just kind of discussing 
whether or not they would take the serum. We also get a scene between Falcon and Zemo discussing it and seeing that they're actually both on the same page about super soldiers, not necessarily about how they handle the situation, but more so on whether or not they would each take the serum. And then we get to our final fight scene, which ends with Hoskins either dead or severely injured. It was hard to tell, but he was accidentally thrown a little too hard by one of the Flag Smasher super soldiers. And we get to see John Walker with super strength do what he does best, which apparently includes going total rage mode and beating someone to death in a very public town square with the Captain America shield. The last scene of the episode is him standing there with kind of hunched shoulders and the bloodstained shield and the entire town square watching him and recording. Hence the name of the episode, The Whole World is Watching. So this week's episode really upped the intensity and it really upped the emotion and just the level of gray that a lot of these characters are. The bad guys aren't really bad guys, the good guys aren't really good guys, at least not anymore after this week, especially after that last scene. And I'm just, even though that scene was kind of spoiled for me with some leaks of the filming on the sets a few months back, I mean, it was just crazy to see on screen. I think this has probably been the best episode so far by far, and I'm just excited, but also kind of terrified for the next couple of weeks, because I mean, they're just, upping the intensity and I don't think you can go much higher with the stakes at this point we're already just like destroying the image of the past what did you guys think of that grizzly finale let me know in the comments below Ben and Bev out <laughs>